Hello, hello. Happy Monday. Right, yo, so I'm going to start talking about what we'll do today because with the slight lag in the Facebook Live, um, I think you guys don't get this till a bit later anyway. So you can still comment, let me know you're here and I'll say hello if I see the comment. Sometimes it doesn't show me them till after, which I've never figured out why. But anyway, we're doing the best we can with the technology available. So, um, I'm also streaming off my phone today, which I'm hoping will be better for the mouth audio syncing thing. So today I thought we'd, I've actually thought of a bit more of a structure with these. I'm thinking every Monday we can focus a little bit more on the philosophy. Um, and then, yeah, maybe on Fridays it'll be slightly more based on different uh, physical elements like lower back or core or whatever else. So today we're looking at another element of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. So that's, as we said last week, that's a text from ancient India dating back roughly around 2000 years ago. Um, so the sutras can be translated to threads, the word sutra, and it refers to concise threads of knowledge that allow us to delve into the core meaning of yoga. And they're, of course, originally in Sanskrit. We work with them translated to English. So in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, the eight limbs of yoga are given as guidelines. And last week we looked at ahimsa, meaning non-harming, and um, that was part of the first limb of yoga, which is the five yamas, which are more of code. So this week we're going on to look at tapas, which is one of the five niyamas, also known as inner observances. Um, so that's the second limb. And tapas can be described as self-discipline. So tap in Sanskrit means to burn, and it can describe the fire we need to keep us fueled to stick at something we mean to do, which requires discipline. It can also describe like the burning away of anything that stands in our way. So remember, yoga is all about balancing. So we cultivate this fiery self-discipline with love and not with pushing. One thing to bring mindful awareness to can be to recognize if we are using our practice to push ourselves too hard because humans are kind of complicated and we can even turn yoga into a punishment if we try hard enough. So that may or may not be relevant to you depending on your personality type. Anyway, waffle over, let's get started straight away. Um, you're already practicing tapas simply by being here and showing up. So we'll put the theory into practice with our movement. Hello, Julian. Hello, Karen. Okie doke. So, come right up to the tops of your mat. Bring the feet hips distance apart so the outer edges of your feet are in line with the outer edges of your mat. Roll the shoulders up, back and down a few times. Hi, Jordan. Hi, Scout. And then roll the shoulders up, back and forward a few times. Flash the fingers out in front of you, to the sides, and up above the head. Then bring the wrists together and roll out the hands, and roll them in. Give them a shake. Stand in your Tadasana. Pressing down through the big toe mounds of both feet, the outer edges of the heels. Feel for a rooting down through the feet and lifting up through the crown of the head. Feel your spine lengthen. Start to hug the belly button in and up, engaging the core. Inhale to reach the arms up to the sky. Exhale, swan dive down to forward fold. Framing the feet with your hands or taking the hands to the shins. Inhale, flat back long legs. Exhale, bend the knees if you need to fold forward, press the palms down and step back to your plank. Inhale here, push the ground, hug the belly up. Exhale, lower your knees, lean forward ever so slightly, hug the elbows in to lower the chest, untuck your toes. Inhale to lift the chest, roll the shoulders down the back, gaze down the nose. Exhale, forehead tap, the floor. Inhale, move through all fours. 
and exhale to tuck the toes, press the belly to the thighs and pedal out through one leg and then the other. Spread your hands wide here. You want your index fingers pointing forward, parallel to each other. You're rooting down through the hands, you're reaching the hips up and back, you're hugging in the lower ribs and you're letting the head drop completely, taking the gaze to the knees or to the toes. Take the gaze forward between your hands, bend your knees really generously to press your belly and your chest to your thighs, and then take a big step all the way up to the top of the mat. Inhale into your halfway lift. Exhale, bend your knees, drop your head forward, fold. Inhale, press the feet down, rise the arms all the way up, gaze up. Exhale, hands through heart centre to either side of the body for our mountain pose. Take a moment here to connect to your breath. Imagine you can inhale all the way down to your feet. And as you exhale out through your nose, Feel the weight pouring down through your feet. Then this time as you inhale through your nose, feel a lift all the way up through the crown of your head. Exhale, feel your shoulders sink down away from the ears. Inhale, reach the arms up, gaze up. Exhale, hinge from the hips, forward fold, knees bent. Inhale, flat back, long legs, halfway lift. Exhale, back to your plank position. Inhale here, push the floor away. Exhale, lower the knees. Take the gaze to the top of your mat as you lean forward, lower down, elbows in. Untuck the toes. Inhale, lift the chest, elbows back. Gaze down the nose. Exhale, forehead touches the mat. Inhale, through your all fours. Spread your ten fingers. Exhale, tuck the toes, reach the pelvis up and back for your down dog. We're going to stay in down dog for five breaths. So inhale one, exhale. Inhale for two, exhale. Inhale for three, really pushing the ground away, squeezing the chest to the thighs. Exhale. Inhale for four, Four, hug in the lower belly as you exhale. Inhale for five, head heavy, gaze at knees or toes. Exhale, gaze forward, bend the knees, step up to the top of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold, bend your knees if you need. Inhale, rise the arms all the way up, take the gaze up to the hands. Exhale, palms together through heart centre, arms by the side. One more, Surya Namaskar A, sun salutation. Inhale, reach the arms up, gaze up. Exhale, forward fold, drop your head, let it be heavy. Inhale, flat back, lengthen your spine. Exhale, forward fold, plant the palms, step back to your plank. And now you've got a choice in your plank, you can lower the knees same as before and use the exhale to carry you down remember the back is long and then if you want to um, do full chaturanga if it's what you're already working with or you feel like you've got the strength in your upper body you can use your inhale to kind of roll forward over the toes so you're coming forward 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 and then with the exhale you come down and it's because you're coming so far forward in your plank that the only option is to then lower down. The elbows stay hugging in, the chest hovers just above the floor. And then you might inhale straight to up dog if you're working with that, where you're pushing down through the hands and the tops of the feet and the pelvis is lifted. Or if there's any twinges in your lower back or you want to stay with the low cobra, feel free to do that instead. Whatever works for you. The self-discipline of yoga is working within your limits, not pushing beyond. Okay, so from wherever you're at here, let's take another inhale in our back bend, wherever it is. Exhale, lower the forehead to the mat. 
Inhale through your all fours position, tuck the toes, thumb to heels. Exhale, lift the hips up and back for downward facing dog. We're going to hold our down dog for another five breaths. So, inhale for one, spread your ten fingers. Exhale. Inhale for two, bend the knees if it helps you to lengthen the spine while pressing the chest to the thighs. Inhale for three, reach the heels down in the direction of the mat. Inhale for four, as you exhale consciously hug in the lower belly. Inhale for five, let the head really be heavy gazing at the knees or the toes. And at the end of your exhale look between your hands, take a step forward. Inhale to your halfway lift, draw the shoulders back away from the ears, exhale, bend the knees if you need to fold over the legs, inhale, rise the arms all the way up, exhale, palms to heart centre, take a moment here, reaching the stern sternum to the thumbs, you can nod the chin ever so slightly down to the chest, feeling a bit of length in the back of the neck, press down through your feet, notice the solid ground beneath you, and feel the breath moving in and out of your body. From here, staying at the top of your mat, you can decide for Utkatasana, our chair pose, whether you want to have big toes to touch slight gap between the heels and legs together, or whether you want to give yourself a little more room and have the feet hips width apart, entirely your decision. And then from whichever feet positioning you have, you're going to reach the arms forward first, palms facing towards each other, and start to lean down and back through the hips. So you really feel like you're about to lower yourself into a chair and then you're holding it here. You want to be able to see your big toes. See your knees are slightly behind your toes. You're pouring the weight down through the heels. From there, you can take the arms up by the ears if you like, or you can keep them forward, entirely up to you. Hug in lower belly, hug in lower ribs. Keep the breath steady. Inhale and exhale. This posture, Utkatasana, in Sanskrit can be translated to fierce pose. So summoning all your fierceness to hold this pose for another five, four, three, two, one. Good job. Inhale, reach up, gaze up. Exhale, hinge from the hips to forward fold, dropping the head. Inhale, flat back, gazing down at the, just above the front of the mat. Exhale, plant the palms, step back to plank. Inhale here. Either moving forward and then exhaling down or lowering the knees and exhaling down. Inhale to low cobra. You can come higher or you can come to up dog. And then exhale to make your way to your downward facing dog. From here, come forward into a plank so your shoulders are above your wrists. Take an inhale. You can also come to half plank. Exhale, squeeze knee up to the chest and start to plant the foot. You might plant it up between your hands, you might give it a help all the way up. From here, untuck the back toes. Inhale, reach up to lunge, front knee over front ankle, right knee kind of tractioning over in direction of right little toe, drawing up and back through right hip crease, squeezing left glute, left hip rolls forwards, reach up through the fingertips, up through the crown of the head, take an inhale here, and an exhale to frame your front foot, and step back to downward facing dog. Pedal out through your feet. 
Then come forward into your full plank or modified plank. Inhale here. Exhale, squeeze left knee up to the chest. Plant the foot either between the hands or give it a big help to step forwards. Untuck your back toes. Inhale, reach the arms up. Let's take a few breaths here. Left knee over left ankle, moving towards the direction of the little toe of the left foot. Draw up and back through the left hip crease. Feel the right hip roll forward. Feel for a little gentle squeeze in between the inner thighs. Inhale to reach up through the fingers, lengthen the back. Exhale, sweep the hands down, frame the front foot. And step back to all fours. Knees beneath hips, wrists beneath shoulders. Inhale, belly drops, gaze all the way up. Exhale, tuck your chin round the back. Inhale, scoop your chest forward, gaze up. Exhale, round the back, push the ground. Inhale, belly down, chest forward. Exhale, round the back, tuck the toes, scoop the hips up and back, bend your knees, press your belly and your thighs. No, press your belly towards your thighs. Gaze forward and you can either step forward or you can press into the hands and take a little hop up to the top of your mat. Inhale, flat back, long legs, long spine. Exhale, bend the knees, drop the head, forward fold. Sink the hips down, we're coming back to our chair. Inhale, sweep the arms up, hold for inhale and an exhale. And then inhale all the way up. Palms to heart center. Let's take a moment to reconnect with the breath. So as your thumbs press to your chest, feel your heart rate and feel the gentle rise and fall of the chest with the inhale and the exhale. You can close the eyes if that helps you better be able to sense the body. And blink the eyes open and you're gonna come to the to face the long side of your mat here so feel free to move your device if you still want to be able to see the demonstrations without having to turn your neck from side to side so the long edge of the mat faces towards your screen from there let's take a big step out to the side arms wide and then we're going to have the outside of our left foot parallel to the top edge of the mat. You'll turn your right toes to point the back short edge of your mat, hands to hips. And you can feel here how your hips kind of come back a little bit towards the left foot, the back foot. Arms spread wide. So we're simultaneously reaching away through the right fingers and away through the left fingers. From there, consciously hug in your lower belly here as you start to tilt the hips back and lean, lean, lean towards the right side with your arms and keep leaning so much as you can hug your belly in and hold here to reach the back of your hand either to the inner thigh, the inner shin or to the foot. The top arm comes up. If it's okay for your neck, you can gaze up at the top hand. If it feels better for your neck to gaze forward or down, go for that. Push down through the outer edge of your back foot and down through all corners of your front foot. Upita Trikonasana, triangle pose. Feel free to take a micro bend in the front leg if it's better for you. We'll take a few breaths here. Inhale for one. Exhale. Inhale for two, steer the chest open to the side. Exhale. Inhale for three. Exhale, hug lower belly in, inhale up to center. Now turn the right toes to face the long side of the mat. So the outer edge of the right foot is in line with the short edge of the mat. Turn the left toes to face the front of your mat and feel the hips knock a little bit back and to the right. Arms open to the side, spread your fingers. Start to lean forward here. 
lean forward, lean forward, lean forward, see if you can hold, inhale, exhale to glide your left arm down to a position that is right for you, your right arm is up, again you can micro bend the front knee if it's better, push down through the outer edge of the right side, spread the left foot into the mat, inhale for one, Remember the chest is steering open to the side. If it's coming down too much, you can lift the left arm up a little. Inhale for two. Gaze up if it's okay for your neck or anywhere else if it's not. Inhale for three. Exhale, hug lower belly in. Inhale, come up to standing. Bring the hands to the hips. And then you might want to widen your stance a little bit here. You can also turn your toes ever so slightly in so the heels are ever so slightly out. And we're coming into Prasarita Padadvatula. Ah, I got the Sanskrit wrong, but I always call this Prasarita spread your feet. That's how I remember the Sanskrit. So we're spreading our feet, our hands are on our hips. As you inhale, lift up out of the waist, lift up through the crown of the head. As you exhale, push back with your bum, coming into a flat back here. Gaze down at the floor so someone could balance something on your back here. Take your hands either to the floor or keep them on your hips if, if that's not available to you. And then if your hands are on the floor, you can walk them back perhaps to be in line with your toes, taking another inhale to lengthen the spine, whether hands are on hips or floor and an exhale to drop the head wherever you're at. Pull the weight into the balls of the feet and kind of try and lift your sit bones up towards the sky here. Let the head be really heavy. And we're gonna hold for a count of five. So inhale for one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Press down to big toe mound. Exhale, inhale for three, exhale, inhale for four, exhale, let the head be really heavy, inhale for five, exhale, consciously hug in the lower belly, inhale back to your flat back position, exhale hands to hips if they're not already there, and inhale to come all the way up to standing. From there, we're going to move our toes out towards the outer corners of the mat. So our heels are in, our toes are out. And I don't know why I'm doing this, but feel free to follow. You can place your hands on your heart and bring the knees from side to side. So there's me trying to do a really structured class with breath counts on self-discipline but I still want to, the water in me still wants to move a little bit fluidly. But like I said at the start, yoga is all about balance. So feel free to explore a little bit of free movement here. You can bring the hands to the hips. You can sweep them up and around either way. And then we'll come into our goddess stance. So first, five-pointed start. Spread your fingers, spread your toes. You can lift your toes off the mat, spread them, spread them, plant them down. Inhale here, stretch your face. Exhale, knees in direction of toes, sink the hips. Hands strung by your sides, palms facing forward. See if you can sink your hips even lower. Lengthening the lower back down, hugging the belly button in and up still. Feel that expansion across the chest. Inhale here, sigh out the mouth. Inhale, nose. Exhale, sigh out the mouth. <sighs> One more time. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, sigh out the mouth. <sighs> Inhale, five pointed star. Stretch up. Exhale, feet together. Clap the hands. <laughs> Give yourself a big round of applause. Well done. We're coming down into our Shavasana now. So, grab what you need to be comfortable. Um, on Friday, we did yoga for the lower back. And I was saying that if anyone's got any sensitivities in the lower back, it's really good to 
um, stack the legs on a cushion or if you've got like a chair that you or a sofa where you could stack the calves on the sofa like this it can help you to be a little bit more comfortable in Shavasana. If you're perfectly comfortable in your normal Shavasana with the legs out wide feel free to go for that so as always we're finding whatever works for us individually. Then start to close your eyes when you're ready. Take a deep, full breath in. And with your breath out, imagine that any tension is being carried out of the body. So the inhale brings in all that fresh nutrients, fresh, fresh air, and the exhale carries out anything that might be clogging things up a bit. And this is a really special, really sacred posture. It's where the body gets a chance to integrate all the movement that it's just been through. Embracing stillness fully. Maybe you notice the natural pause between breaths. You might notice the feet flopping out to the side because they're so relaxed. And if the backs of the hands are on the floor, you might notice the fingers kind of curling towards the palms. Let your head be really heavy. Feel the back of the head touch the floor. Let your tongue relax in your mouth. And let yourself be. For the next few moments, I'm going to leave you in complete silence to have your own experience of this relaxation, this stillness. And in about a minute, I'll bring you back around. Gently start to deepen your breath. Feel the physical edges of your body. Notice the temperature of the air in the room where you are. And start to wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes. Unless you want to stay here in your Shavasana, in which case you can close down your device and enjoy a much longer Shavasana. If you're ready to come out, explore movement by circling the hands, circling the feet, maybe rocking the head from side to side, kind of ease out the neck here. And when you're ready, hug the knees to the chest. Roll over to one side, take a final little moment, roll down one side. This posture in yoga philosophy represents a rebirth after your practice. Then keeping the eyes closed or the gaze lowered, prop yourself up to a seated position. Roll the shoulders up, back and down a few times. Feel that lift up through the crown of your head so the spine is nice and long. Palms together at heart center in Anjali Mudra. Feel the heart beating here by the thumbs. Feel the breath moving. Loka ha samasta sukinu bhavantu. The Sanskrit translation is roughly May all beings be happy and well, and may my actions contribute to the happiness and the well being of all. 
Inhale, reach your prayer up over your head. Exhale, bring the prayer down to the floor. Tap your forehead with your thumbs. And when you're ready, you can come up and head out into the rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope that was an interesting exploration of the niyama of tapas, self-discipline. And I love to know how uh, this translates in into everyday life off the mat as well. So if you've got any reflections at all on self-discipline in general, then let's start a discussion. Feel free to comment on what's your experience with self-discipline? How do you find it? Does it come easy? Is it completely unnatural to you? Is there resistance? Let us know. And thanks again for joining. Bye bye.